Hey everyone, it's Chris with HotshotsCatering.com and this is another episode of Hot Shots TV. Now, ever since the first day we met, I know you have a question on your mind that you've been wanting to ask me and unfortunately, I haven't even been able to answer it for you yet. You wanna know what it is? Cause I know what it is. Chris, what is the best entry level espresso machine that I can buy today? Well, we're gonna get right into that right now. Stay tuned and we will be right back. Hey, coming down like precipitation. I ain't never met a limitation. Hate applying my elimination. Gotta go to Google for the information. I'm a super and welcome back. So before I get into what is the best entry level espresso machine that you can buy, you have to know a little bit more about myself and my ideology that surrounds hot shots. Very first thing I want to tell you, make it clear, regardless of any of my videos that you watch, if you watch me for the coffee profile videos, the reviews of coffee, if you watch me about the gourmet coffee experience, anything like that, anything that has to do with coffee, which pretty much my whole channel does, you need to understand that I do not want to give you a biased opinion that's going to sway your opinion on something that you like. Okay. So what does that mean? Well, if you love Starbucks, I don't ever want to find myself telling you something bad about Starbucks that I don't want you to not love Starbucks anymore. The thing about coffee to me is everybody has their own personal taste, personal likes and dislikes when it comes to coffee or really about anything. And so what I want to do is I want to give you, try to give you an unbiased opinion uh, about what I do with reviews or what I think about certain types of coffee. But then at the same time with everything, it's going to have some kind of bias to it, but I don't want that biasy. Anything I tell you, I do want you to have somewhat of an open mind. So hear that out first. I never am here trying to push a coffee on you to change your mind, particularly about one way or the other. If there's a coffee you like, I want you to continue liking that coffee. But more importantly, I like you to try to think about why do you like that coffee? Why do you like that espresso? There's coffees and espressos that I like that other people wouldn't like, or the majority of people would like that I don't like. So that's step one. That's the most important thing. Uh, and that's going to come into these espresso machines and stuff that we take a look at today. And what I try to do is give you options. That's the whole goal of this video, give you options. And then you kind of figure out what might be best for you. Uh, that being said, let's go into the second part of this hot shots, the gourmet coffee catering experience that we offer. Our business was built on capsule pod machines, a very high end capsule pod machines that deliver very quickly, very fast and a very, very high quality product. That's the business that I'm in. That's the business I've created about 13, 14 years ago now. And that is kind of what I focus on. So, you know, I can give you a little bit of a story when I go to coffee expos, coffee fest, all these different things. When I go out and I go tell people what I do, most of the premier experts laugh at what we do. And that's fine. They can laugh at what we do. They cannot take us seriously for the type of coffee and equipment that we use. That's fine. But there is a reason why we use what we use. And there is a reason why I do what I do. We want to get coffee to you, the customer as fast as possible, but at the highest quality as possible. Uh, other coffee shops, there's boutique coffee shops out there that, you know, they're focusing on giving you the highest end espresso crafted by an individual as possible. That's the goal and something unique. You know, we do the same thing, but our goal is to do it much, much quicker than you waiting three, four, five, seven minutes on a latte. We do it in about 35, 25 seconds. So there's a big difference there. And I think you should understand that before I get into kind of what I'm reviewing as the best coffees, uh, coffee machines, espresso machines <laughs> for your needs. So with that being said, let's get started. I'm going to show you online what I personally think is the best. Uh, and before we do that, I'm going to tell you, I'm also a distributor for Lavazza. Okay. And that needs to be clear because I don't really get paid by Lavazza, but I offer their equipment. So I have a biased opinion about Lavazza. Now out of all the videos and everything that we've done, I keep that biasy out. I think for the most part, we haven't even talked about Lavazza coffee, but if you know us and you know what we use, we use Lavazza coffee. And I personally love the Italian brand coffees. 
We've talked about Illy before. So that being said, the very first machine I'm gonna show you here before we go online and we take a look at some machines, you should take a look at this Lavazza Classy Mini. Mini Classy, whatever it is. <laughs> this machine I do sell and honestly, I need to tell you about Lavazza because Lavazza, the reason why I personally use Lavazza, we carry all their machines. The reason why I use them is they never break down. They never quit working. I've been in this business for 14 years. And when I started this business, I started with Lavazza machines. Matter of fact, this one over here on my shoulder, they're great machines. They're bulletproof, they're workhorses. I've never had anyone say anything negative about the machines other than maybe the process is slow or they've had a couple like issues, normally they're user issues. But in all honesty, if you want something basic, you want something that just does espresso, the Classy Mini is one of the perfect machines to do that. And I've been using this machine. This machine has another brother and another sister now. They've moved on from the visual aspects of this machine, but they're very reasonable and they're a great way to get started. So let me first start there. The other machines that we use in the business, I use them because they don't go down. So when you're looking at a machine, I personally wanna say that's something you need to think about as well as how easy is it get to get the capsules and the coffee that you want to get if you're going to go a capsule route. Um, so all those little things, we'll get into it, but that's something you need to know. And you need to first know that I back Lavazza uh, for as long as I've had my business. We've been using Lavazza coffee and those are the reasons why. Good quality product, fast equipment, and something that doesn't go down or very hard to go down. So keep that in mind. Now let's get into the review. So let's get into what I personally recommend for entry level espresso machines. Now, there's three different types of coffee or espresso machines that you are going to need to know about before we dive in. Uh, very first is manual espresso machines. So manual espresso machines are these machines that you see at the gourmet coffee shops. Normally you do have to do everything from grinding your own beans to weighing the beans to tamping them down into a porta filter, attaching that porta filter on the machine, flipping a switch, calculating the time it takes for the water and everything to go through to give you appropriate brew, turning it off and doing all that fun stuff. That's a manual espresso machine. That's typically what comes with it. The great thing about manual espresso machines is that you have full control of the coffee that's coming out, the end result of a perfect espresso. The downside is this time and the amount of work that you have to put into it. Uh, here at Hot Shots, we actually utilize semi-auto machines. That's the second kind of machine you need to think about. So semi-auto machines uh, typically are capsule-based or pod-based. Uh, they don't have to be. Sometimes they can be uh, a hopper or something where you're putting in the beans. But typically, it's a little bit less work. It's kind of in the middle range of what the third one we'll be talking about, full auto, uh, and a manual machine where you're doing all the work. Um, the great thing about these type of machines is typically you can have really good espresso come out, less worrying about how to do all this. You don't have to have a porta filter a lot of times. You don't have to put all this stuff together and worry about, hey, okay, you screwed up your coffee this morning, but you're trying to get to work. Um, so that's the great thing about semi-automatics. I like them here at Hot Shots. We like them because of the amount that we can have really good coffee come out very quickly for our customers and clients and be able to still have full control of the end result of a latte and things of that nature. Uh, the fully automatic machines, these are the machines that you would see at your, uh, I kind of joke here, but at your tire shops or your waiting lounges, uh, things of that nature at your, maybe your, your car dealer or what have you. You walk up to it, you push a button, you give it some dollars or, or you don't. Uh, maybe if it's an at-home machine, you just push a button and it will do everything for you. Uh, the downside to these machines over the years though they've gotten a lot better. Uh, one of the negatives is, is that the quality of coffee is normally subpar uh, in the past. Though, like I said, they've gotten a lot better. Uh, and then the other thing is when something breaks, it breaks and it's an expensive part. Um, that's the other thing with these machines. Typically, not always, but typically, when you have a full auto machine, the prices of that type of stuff changes from a manual machine for replacement parts and it goes up 
with semi-automatic to fully automatic. Um, more of that's gonna be more in commercialized coffee, but for what you guys are looking for, that would probably be more of the case of something that's more expensive when it breaks. So other than that, keep that in mind. The other option or the other things that you need to keep in mind is do you want to, what is the purpose of this espresso machine? Is this an espresso machine entry level that you're gonna have at your house? Is this gonna be one that you're gonna have at work? Uh, what is the time frame that you have to make espresso and coffee uh, out of this machine? Um, I think a lot of people love the idea of a fully manual machine, something beautiful on their countertop, and being able to make espresso and coffee. But the downside I think that they don't think about is after they get it, it ends up being pushed aside and then the Keurig comes out. Because you simply don't have enough time to really have time to make a great cup of espresso or coffee. Um, so keep that in mind too, is you know what would you rather have? Would you rather have a fully manual machine where you have to grind the beans and do all this stuff and maybe not use it as often as you want? Or are you gonna be you know really gung-ho and, and use this machine every single day and really do it, you know, and, and, and focus on making a great espresso or coffee. So think about that too before you put in money. These machines I'm going to be talking about are going to be all less than a thousand dollars. So not really a big hit to your wallet, but uh, I would definitely start thinking about something like that too as you go up above the thousand dollar mark as well. Um, lastly, I will also say pods or ground coffee. Pluses to pods is that they're quick, they're efficient, you drop them in, you push a button, normally you don't have any issues with the coffee coming out um, as long as you're upkeeping the machine, but you do have, some people would argue that you have a less quality of espresso coming out. I personally, as long as I've been doing this and we've been using high quality semi-automatic machines, I can tell you that there are some really good semi-automatic machines out there and we're going to get into some of that as well. Uh, the negative side to that is normally you're buying a brand. So Nespresso, Lavazza, Illy, what have you, you're buying a brand of coffee that goes into that machine. Normally those are proprietary. You can't just switch out Nespresso or what have you. K-Cups has come a long way. Uh, uh, Nespresso has come a long way to where a lot of brands are supporting that but just keep that in mind you're limited to where you can um, even buy an adapter but you're really limited to using coffee that you like maybe you found some coffee at your local roaster they can't afford to make k-cups or Nespresso pods things like that for you to use so you have to find either get an adapter the adapter might not always work well things of that nature. So just keep that in the back of your mind as well as something that you have to think about when getting into these. So without further ado, let's get into it. As far as the espresso machines, as I would start out, if I was you, where would you look? Of course, we go to Amazon, Amazon Prime, if you will. Uh, and this is what we're looking at here. So you have a lot of popular brands. DeLonghi is a popular brand. Um, but we get down here and these are actually good recommendations. Breville, I will say, has been the most, probably the most popular entry-level espresso machine for the last couple years now. Um, and they've even gone to, I believe now, like a touchless version of their machine. Uh, it has the Porta filter. Uh, I would say that this type of machine is going to be kind of your manual semi-automatic. These are primarily like this one I'm looking at here. Uh, if it has a porta filter, it's pretty much going to be a manual machine. Um, but you know they might have other options too uh, that you can actually add uh, pods or capsules, things like that. A lot of porta filters have adapters too, so keep that in mind. If you want to go really manual, and this is I'm kind of partly joking here, this Nano Presso. We did a video about this. I could tell you this is actually a great little uh, traveling espresso maker. You fill it with hot water and they even have NSS, NS adapters that you can put in your Nespresso pods on the other end. Um, so this is a great machine, not very practical. Like I said, if we're talking about practicality, uh, but if you're someone that, hey, I just wanna have espresso on the go, I wanna travel with it, 
Uh, I don't want to really work hard, but at the same time, I, I kind of do because I have to put the hot water, heat the hot water, put it inside this thing. But I want to have pretty good espresso and manually pump it out. You want to go manual, this is the best way to do that, uh, unpractically. Um, but like I said, this is great if you want something, maybe you're someone that just wants to travel with espresso and coffee. Uh, think about this machine. Uh, or this little espresso machine as well. Um, so other than that, you know, Amazon has a lot of great options. Like I said, Breville, we'll get into that. Um, but you know, look here for the deals that you want to. Um, let's get into Lavazza. Lavazza, as I previously see previously mentioned is the brand of coffee that we utilize uh, and I back them uh, 110% when it comes to coffee and the espresso. Um, their machines, uh, they don't make machines, they actually use other machines. So Seiko is one of the brands which now Seiko owns uh, Gaggia and, and all these other brands. So, you know, it's it's kind of funny they, they kind of all get bought up. So don't always, I wouldn't say always look at just the espresso machines. Um, also look at what, what you're getting with this stuff. So Lavazza, like I said, they use some of the highest end brands. Uh, Seiko and all those brands are very, very good. They make other machines. So you know the quality is good. Their coffee, they have a lot of different types of coffees. They have teas, they even have a hot chocolate that you can put in their machines. They use what they call a blue capsule system is their latest system. Uh, it kind of looks like this here, but these are the machines like I mentioned, the Classy Mini. This is a great machine uh, under probably three, four hundred dollar mark. Uh, the Classy Plus is another great machine, and these are great, but they're pro primarily going to be you push a button for espresso. Okay, so capsule goes in the top, you close it, you push a button, you get espresso. You get really good espresso, but you get espresso. So um, no milk uh, as far as I know with these machines. Now they keep coming out with stuff. This Omnia, this is actually a 2317 uh, machine. These are the machines actually uh, that we use here at Hot Shots. Um, they're a great machine, they'll do everything for you, but we're going above that uh, uh, 1500 mark that we're talking about, or $1,000 mark, excuse me. Uh, next, let's talk about Nespresso. Now, Nespresso has a great line of coffees. Uh, I personally was never a huge fan when Nespresso came out, but um, their coffee is good. Uh, I would say that their Nespresso, the Nespresso line, their Virtuo line, which is what we're look, taking a look at here. Uh, these are kind of cool because typically, now once again, this is a capsule pod machine, but when you put the pod in uh, and you close it, the machine actually pushes water through it in s several holes. Um, but it actually spins the capsule. So the end result is what you get is this very rich, foamy, uh, what they call crema on top of the coffee. Uh, I've always liked that. I, I think that's something very unique to what they have. Most espresso machines you'll find, especially capsules or pod machines, is you put the capsule or pod in, you close it, you push a button, and you're gonna get, you're gonna get the uh, crema coming out, but it's gonna be pretty small because it's just, whatever's coming out through the coffee. This has a unique flair to it where it actually spins the capsule. Um, and so you get a little bit more foam. Some people like that, some people don't, um, but they've advanced their machines. Most of these machines are gonna last you a couple years. Um, if you take care of them, they'll probably last a lot longer. But uh, these are overall some great machines and great coffee. Uh, what I was going to say about the coffee is I was never a huge fan of their coffee, uh, but I found recently it's gotten a lot better. I just wasn't a fan of the aftertaste of their coffee. Their coffee is very good. I would say along the lines of the Italian brands of coffee, uh, when you're looking at something entry level, definitely take a look at Nespresso. Uh, and the reason why I say that is Nespresso has recently become kind of the leader of the home coffee movement along with the next brand we're gonna talk about is Keurig. So definitely take a look at that. Also, last thing while I'm talking about Nespresso, uh, they have frothers. So you can get these kits. Here's like a 209 kit, um, probably more expensive, probably three, $400. You're getting the espresso machine, plus you're getting the frother 
uh, so that you can put some milk in and it will do everything if you're into the lattes and all that stuff. If you're not into lattes, then just look for an espresso machine. You can always get a frother down the road. Uh, if it has a steam wand or something attached to it, you can do your own frothing. These machines, uh, for, for what I know, do not have a steam wand attached. They are primarily just capsule machines, a lot like what the Lavazza machines would be. Giving you espresso and then you foam and froth in a frother and pour the milk in and create a latte. Uh, the K a Cup Keurig. <laughs> This is the K-Cafe Special Edition. Uh, we've actually purchased this for a family member in the past. Uh, and, you know, I know, I know, Keurig, you know, we're talking about entry-level espresso machines. This isn't really an espresso machine, let's be honest. It's a coffee machine, but you can get espresso pods from Lavazza, you can get espresso pods from uh, Cafe Bucello, you can, get, you can get all these different pods from these various different companies that are espresso-based pods, and you can use them in the K-Cup machine, so it doesn't even have to be this. But the cool thing about this machine is that it does have a, obviously, brews different levels of lattes, things like that, but it also allows you to, with this fancy frother, dishwasher safe, that you can pour milk in here, hit a button, and you'll be able to either have, I believe it just does the foam uh, as a cold, or you can do, um, obviously, a hot latte. Larger mugs, things like that. Uh, but yeah, that's basically that. It's, it's a coffee machine. Um, not necessarily an espresso machine, but like I said, if we're talking entry level, I wouldn't pass this up. Uh, the family member we got it for, she's had it for probably close to a year now, and she really hasn't had any issues with it. She had a little bit of an issue with the frother, but uh, she was new to coffee, and uh, she's still learning. I don't think there was an issue with the machine from later on what we found out. It was more of just something different that, that she wasn't doing. Uh, she felt like it was a user error. So um, the machine so far has been great. Like I said, the coffee and the espresso that goes in here, uh, it's more of a K-cup, not traditionally an espresso machine, but uh, could give you, give you the same effect for a very decent price, about 200 bucks. This is probably as entry level as you will get. Uh, next, let's go to Breville once again. Now they have Nespresso machines on their site, but you know, you don't need a, looking at these machines, you got the Bambino, this is a, a $500 machine, probably a really great machine. But these are the ones, the Barista Express uh, that I would recommend, the Barista Touch, um, that's right at $1,000. Uh, and then you can go crazy. Personally, if you're gonna spend over $1,000, I'll do another video here uh, down the road that's gonna talk about espresso machines I would recommend if you're going up and above that 1000 price range. I feel like you wanna get a better machine uh, if you're gonna do that. Um, and then of course they have the Nespresso stuff. So other than that guys, that's gonna be pretty much it for my entry level espresso machine recommendations. So that's it. That is what I recommend for entry level espresso machines that you guys can get today. Now, like I said, these are common questions I get asked almost every day. Chris, what espresso machines do you re recommend? What coffee machines do you recommend? And so I am just doing my honest, giving you my honest opinion with what machines I think are gonna work best for you and probably not hurt your budget and something that you can pretty much rely on. Uh, but take this information, like I said, at the start of this video, at the end of the day, it really comes down to what do you want? What do you wanna do? Do you wanna go to a full auto? Do you wanna go to a semi-auto machine? What would you like to do? And think about this because I get this question a lot. Uh, think about how much involvement do you want to have with your coffee every day well other than that guys that's going to wrap it up for me i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did give me a thumbs up please uh, like and subscribe to this channel if you're new here definitely want to see more of you guys coming out and checking out our videos my videos um, and maybe you have some of these machines or any of these recommendations let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are i love getting the feedback you guys have been giving me in the comments it helps me so much it keeps me going and making these videos for you guys so thank you so much hope you guys are doing doing well staying safe and i will see you guys next time 
Hey guys, are you looking for some great masks, some sanitizers, and some great coffee? Well, check out shophotshots.com right now so you can check out our whole online store and everything we have to offer you. Have you not subscribed yet? If not, definitely click this button up here. You need to subscribe to this channel. And if you wanna see more great videos, click over here. I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for joining me.